This is breaking news. We start with breaking news right now, and you see it right there. You're looking live at a very active crime scene in Salinas. Central Coast News confirmed a man in a wheelchair was shot and killed about 30 minutes ago. I'm Mark Cotarobles. And I'm Jasmine Veal. Trying to outrun danger, then this happens. It's chilling video. A man takes on the tsunami from inside his car. I tell you, Norm, uh, temperatures have definitely dropped significantly since we've been out here. What else is in store for this uh, Soledad area in terms of fighting this fire? Well, Jasmine, that means relative humidities are coming up. Surveillance video of crimes in a surprise place tonight you're seeing this video before police let's go to Brittany Davis Poli our evening news producer Brittany what are we working on well if you haven't already heard Durban Day is back on which means our very own American Idol James Durban is headed home to Santa Cruz and there are a couple of things you should be aware of there was a vehicle that rolled over at State Route 146 at Bryant Canyon Road that's causing some traffic congestion Central Coast News right now this is breaking news we begin with breaking news. Just over two hours ago, a plane crashed into a Watsonville Community Hospital building, ending in that fiery crash. A live look now in Watsonville tonight, and we do know two people died when that plane hit. Investigators, firefighters still on the scene, and we broke this story on KCBA. Well, KCBA.com minutes after it happened, and we brought you live updates all night. I'm Jazz. Let's go to Mark. All right, Jazz. Yeah, we're live here in Watsonville, just off Highway 1 in Airport Boulevard. It is still a very active scene. It's likely going to be a long night in early morning here for investigators on scene. The call came in around 7.30 tonight. As you know, we were in the newsroom, that first call of possibly an explosion and then an airplane, which you can see is there uh, into the side of this medical office uh, just off Airport Boulevard and Nielsen Street. Watsonville Fire, they were just about the first on scene. They have since left uh, for the investigators to finish up here tonight. Let's get you caught up in a fact check tonight on what exactly has happened. As mentioned, we do know that two people killed tonight in this plane crash. The Federal Aviation Administration is on scene this, e this evening. They are expecting a couple more members to arrive later tonight. Uh, we do know, we got confirmation that the airplane hit the parking lot first. Uh, during this crash, somehow came down across the parking lot, skidding across the ground before making contact with the office building. And we do know that no one inside the building was hurt. I spoke to a local pilot from Watsonville. He believes this airplane was taking off at the time. He explained how fast the airplane was possibly going. This airplane on takeoff is climbing at 70 mile an hour, 80 mile an hour, something like that. Um, they'll do 170, 80, 90 mile an hour in cruise, but in a takeoff he isn't doing that. However, if he lost control, he could well have been doing substantially faster than 70 or 80 mile an hour. As you can see in a lot of the video that you've been watching tonight, most of the airplane is outside of the building. The tail portion of that plane is sticking out onto the sidewalk. That was an indication, according to that pilot, Joe Shelton, that the plane was not going too fast when it hit the building. He said, as far as the survival, it was more about the fire. The fire is what uh, was the largest concern for the pilots. Uh, Joe Shelton also saying, he does not see this being a larger issue here in Watsonville with the airport. Uh, no type of policy change uh, needs to happen, he said. In most cases, whether it's uh, taking off or landing, airplanes usually would not be going over this portion um, of the hospital here, so usually not a concern. He does not see a bigger discussion that needs to be had. Central Coast News reporter Asnith Smith has also been on scene this evening, as I have at Asnith. This is really developing throughout the night. We need to make it very clear. No one in the hospital hurt or affected all the visitors. Visitors, patients, doctors, employees, they are all okay tonight. And Asnath, though, you spoke to people who were at the hospital tonight, still very shaken up. That's exactly right, Mark. In fact, I spoke to Robin Ronald, who was with her mom at the time. She was on the third floor of the hospital, and more than an hour later, she was still shaking. Now, she was at the hospital with her mother when she saw a fire and then big plumes of smoke through a window seconds after the plane crashed. When she went outside, she saw the plane crash through the front doors of the medical office. The only way that you could tell that it was a plane was that there's one little piece that is not charred that looks like an airplane. The rest of it is just a charred mass of 
something. This kind of thing happens other places. I mean, Watsonville, for all of its size, is still a small town. And the very fact that an airplane hits our hospital, or, well, part of our hospital, is just incredible. As she mentioned, when the hospital was built, people were concerned it was so close to the Watsonville Airport, just northeast of here, about a quarter mile away. Now, as far as patient care, once again, uh, they are safe and it's business as usual. There was smoke in the medical office building, but the hospital is on separate ventilation and electrical systems, so all the patient areas aren't affected. All right, Asna Smith, thanks for the update tonight. Again, uh, we need to stress this is not going to be over in an hour or two. Uh, police still on scene tonight. I have a uh, deputy chief of Rudy Escalante from the Watsonville Police Department, and he has an update here tonight about the plane. We have not really mentioned the specifics of this airplane. A lot of people here locally, they know the pilots, they know these airplanes. Uh, so what are we talking about tonight to confirm that? Originally, it was indicated it was possibly a small Cessna, but this was a 1974 Mooney M20F plane that had uh, crashed and sl in the parking lot and slid into the building. And uh, the way the structure is going to be is the FAA has uh, control of the scene, the crash site itself. Once the NTSB arrives here, they will be responsible for the investigation. Uh, Wattsville Police will play a supportive role in that effort if need be. Hey, uh, we got information that that first report from the NTSB comes out in a week. The final report, six to eight months. For tonight, you say your role, what is it now moving forward? At this point, we're providing assistance in scene security. Once they arrive here, probably within another hour, hour and a half, we'll know more as to where they're going to need our assistance. Are we learning anything about the pilots tonight, if they're local or, or if they were just visiting? Uh, nothing new on that effort. Okay. Deputy Chief Rudy Escalante from the Watsonville Police Department. Again, uh, those reports are still going to be coming in uh, maybe within a week. The Federal Aviation Administration, they have a couple representatives here tonight. They are expecting a larger response maybe throughout the night or tomorrow. But again, two people dead here tonight when this airplane crashed. We believe after takeoff at the Watsonville Airport, it is just across the street here on Airport Boulevard, very close quarters. Uh, when we learn more information, we'll let you know. We're going to stay on scene during this newscast and have those updates also online at KCBA.com. Jasmine, we'll send it back to you in the studio. All right, Mark. Well, and as mentioned, the hospital saying that it was actually a medical building, an OBGYN medical office that this small plane crashed into where people leave around five o'clock. So pretty lucky by my standards. But we do want to show you some eye coverage sent into us by viewers tonight. Viewer photos first showing the smoke, the damage that this fiery crash did to the plane as it smashed right through the wall of the OBGYN medical office. Uh, as you scroll through the photos here uh, from different angles showing the charred roof, uh, the crime scene tape already up around the building pretty fast. His response was very, very fast and the, and the hospital actually thanking firefighters and paramedics for getting there in such a timely manner. A little bit closer, some more smoke and and the flames were just incredible. I saw eye coverage video um, a few about two an hour or so ago, and this plane was on fire until firefighters could put it put out all of the flames. And of course, uh, people gathering around and just in shock. Norm, as we go to our Central Coast News meteorologist Norm Hoffman tonight, we were talking about the weather and whether that played an issue into this crash. Well, as the plane took off, uh, was either taking off or landing at about seven. 30 this evening, the Watsonville Airport was clear. The winds were out of the southwest at five to seven miles an hour, so more than likely he was using runway 22. And, and you mentioned some of the sunshine from the viewer photos that we are looking at. Some of those that. pictures, the sun was shining, and in one of the videos, I caught a glimpse of the fog bank just mm -hmm. off to the west toward the water. So the whole runway area was clear for this pilot, and the temperature was about 60 degrees and just light winds. Don't think weather played a factor could have played a factor in a decision he might have made to make a turn and go back around. I'm not sure, but uh, we don't have those facts this evening. But right now, either taking off or landing, uh, more likely taking off or doing touch and goes, in which they land and take right back off again, and uh, more than likely uh, lost control of that plane as it took off. A true tragedy tonight, too, sure. Too sharply. And some of the clues saying that none of the parking lot was really damaged, just some skid marks, and then bounced 
bouncing into that and medical in office. Right. All right, Norm, thanks. Well, we're going to continue to get you the latest on this breaking plane crash, this breaking news that we've been bringing you at the Watsonville Community Hospital on KCBA.com. You can also go there to sign up for breaking news alerts.